everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Kavre, a couple that loves to play board games. And sea life. Under the sea. Now today we're doing a Kickstarter preview to you of Octopus Garden! Wow! Which I'm sure you've already seen from the beautiful intro. <laughs> This game is designed by Roberta Taylor, illustrated by Carrie Aitken, and published by Maple Games, who helped sponsor this Kickstarter preview. And they're from Canada! Canadians! <laughs> well, the goal of Octopus Garden is to basically create the most beautiful underwater garden. This game is basically a set collection game where you'll purchase rows or columns, place them into your garden, and ultimately score points. Now you gotta be careful though, cause some of those points can be negative, and ultimately you're going to want to try and score the most points to win. Well, let's take a quick look at how to play the game. You begin the game by setting up. You'll place a central market board in the middle of the table, give each player a garden board and two pearl tokens. You'll place the remaining pearls on the little seashell near the market board. You'll stack the clownfish and seahorse tokens beside the central market. Then you'll place the oyster tokens in the oyster bed of the section, Fill the draw bag with all the garden tokens and mix them around, and then draw nine from the bag and place them on the central market board. You're now ready to start. Now on your turn, you'll do the following steps in order. Harvest pearl, collect and plant garden tokens, move any sea stars and hermit crabs, then refill the market board. Let's dive in. Now at the start of your turn, you'll harvest one pearl for each oyster you have in your garden. Simply take the pearl from the oyster shell. Now the second step is to collect and plant garden tokens. Buy any one complete row or column. Now this is only possible if you have the cost of the pearls that the tiles cost. At that point you'll pay those pearls and take the tiles. Then you'll place them on your player board in any empty space. If at any point you collect three anemones and they're clumped together, you'll score a clownfish. If you've done the same with seagrass tokens, but collected five, you'll receive a seahorse. These will gain you extra points at the end of the game. You're able to collect additional tokens by creating another full set of these tiles. Now, if you don't buy a row of column, you can instead attract a new oyster from the oyster bed. Oysters cost one pearl plus the number of oysters you already own, and it increase your income at the beginning of each turn. Now, if you don't wanna do either of the two options, you can choose to pass, but if you do so, you have to remove one tile from the central market. The next thing you'll do is move your sea stars and your hermit crabs. Sea stars are really hungry and they wanna eat your oysters. So they'll move one space closer to the nearest obtained oyster. Hermit crabs, on the other hand, are just looking for a new home. So on this move phase, you may choose to move them one space in any direction. If at any point they land on top of an empty shell or trash token, they have found a new home. Now they'll carry that home with them in the subsequent turns and can choose to find a new home instead of the one they're in. The last step on your turn is to refill the market. You'll simply do this by grabbing three new tokens and placing them onto the empty spaces. And then the next player is up. Now the game ends once one player has filled their board. Everyone else gets a turn and then you can begin final scoring. First, you'll add up points from your Clownfish and Seahorse bonus tokens. Then you'll score your relics. Zero points if you have one, two each if you have two, and five each if you have three or more. Then you'll score your Hermit Crabs and Shells. Losing a point for a crab without a home, gaining a point for a shell without a crab, and five points for a crab carrying a shell on its back. Then you'll score your trash. If you have one, you'll lose one point. If you have two, each one is worth negative two points, and so on but a hermit crab with trash as his home is zero points. Finally, you'll add up all the beauty points you'll see from the corals, anemones, sea grasses, and sea stars, and subtract two points for each oyster token you have. The person who scores the most wins. Now that's the base game. There's also expert modules you can add to spice up your underwater garden. Eight of them. The Mimic Octopus can be placed in your garden and act as either an anemone or a seagrass by flipping itself over. Another example is the diver. If the diver enters your board, it quickly collects all of the relics and the trash. So it cleans up your garden, but also takes all the treasures. And there's many more for you to discover as well. And that's Octopus Garden. Yay, Octopus Garden. What sets this game apart, I think, is the 
combination of the buying from the market, either row or column, and then mm -hmm. placing those tiles. Because it's really neat of how you really position yourself to take various tiles, depending on the pearls that you have. Yep. And almost competing to make sure that your opponent doesn't get those really valuable rows that can really get them a little bit farther ahead. Yeah, and it's like a balancing act because sometimes you might end up having to take a mm -hmm. not so great tile um, to like just because you have to, there's so many good tiles in the other the other two tiles, for example. Or it's just what you can afford, maybe. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's what you can afford. It's a lot of, yeah, it's this balancing act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other balancing act, of course, is the oysters. Mm -hmm. Because you can obtain more and more earlier in the game, but then you really have to hope that that extra pearl currency allows you to buy more valuable tiles, or you get that starfish at the end that just eats all of them up. Yeah, I think that's what's really cool is because you can plan to pick up a starfish later on and then slowly move him around your board or bam around your boards to like pick up mm -hmm. the oysters because you probably won't need much more money. But it is risky because your opponents could steal the starfish. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think that tricky yeah. element comes into play for sure. Yes. But that said, this game is pretty easy to set up. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's quick to learn. You have that expert mode that adds more and more complexity to it. So it's just one of those games that seems like it's a great, it has a great table presence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the art in it is beautiful. Carrie Aiken did a phenomenal mm -hmm. job. It's absolutely stunning. I love having this game on our table. And yeah. I bet you if you have it set up, your friends will quickly jump in right away to ask you, hey, like <laughs> I want to play. Like, look at this beautiful starfish. And yes. it goes around your board. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Who do you think this game is for? Who do you think would enjoy this type of game? Oh, honestly, anybody who likes set collection, mm -hmm. anybody who likes nature. I think that it's really like because of the vibrant art, it really speaks to that mm -hmm. nature aspect. And then it's got that cool diver where mm -hmm. you, if you do play with that module, it collects all your treasure and collects all the trash. So it's mm -hmm. doing the environment. Uh, a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the expert modules really turn the game. And the thing is, is that there's over a hundred tiles in this game. Yeah. So you, and because each module, there's only four of them. So the chances of drawing them aren't too high. But once you do, it really spices that element up a little bit. It makes it mm -hmm. a little bit more exciting because you'll maybe want to compete for those depending on the pearls that you have. Um, but the currency in this game is what I think really sets it apart. Is It's that kind of push... If you like strategy games where you have to kind of optimize the resources you have, and each resource matters quite a bit, I think this might be a game for you. Yes, exactly. And obviously because it's easy to set up, it's um, a little more simple. The game is, uh, although it has the strategy that Ilya is talking about, it is fast, it is easy to learn, it's kind of for any age group, I believe. And the cool thing is too, I think there's a lot of variability in playing with one or two to four players because at least with two players you can kind of decide maybe it's more of a do some of yeah some mm -hmm. of the tiles that you're going to be able to guarantee yourself and then on the other hand with four people it's got that unpredictability where you're really trying to like pick things up on the fly mm -hmm. yeah i like to compare it to calico because if you play two player calico for example it's like you're mm. you're the board comes back to you with probably at least the one same, tile yeah. Yeah. And you're you're planning for like what you're you're trying to take away, and you're really playing against the other person. But with more than like with three to four players, I think there's more of that a little bit of randomness, which makes it a little bit more fun too. Yeah. yeah. I'll say it again too that I think I really I like how you can move the hermit crabs around and the starfish. Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't think I've seen much of that in many other games where mm -hmm. you can essentially save yourself some points by moving things around and mm -hmm. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, everything's set in stone except those two that can kind of shift the variability in a little bit. So yeah, and the extra modules does add some aspects where you can move some of the tiles as well, which makes it quite interesting. Or save some of your tiles in the market. Yeah. It is something that is definitely worth checking out and because it has all these modules, you can honestly just like toss one module in, toss another module in, play. Maybe try module. all eight, although yeah. the rule book does not recommend it. <laughs> With that said, check out the Kickstarter below. We'll link the link down there and you can read all about it, learn a little bit more, watch some more content and mm -hmm. see everything that the game does have to offer. Yes. Yeah, we're really grateful to be a part of this Kickstarter and supporting Canadian content. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this game reached out to you and you'll look further into whether or not you want to back it. Go ahead and dive on in. Hey, water jokes. <laughs> With that said, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel down below. We're super grateful to have you here and let us know what you think of Octopus Garden.
Mm -hmm. And of course, let us know if you're going to back it because we would love other people to talk to about this game. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you later. Bye.